excited to introduce ATPCA. Joe James is going to tell us a lot about bioproducts, which sounds like such a cool way to sequester carbon, deliver products. I can't wait to learn more. It's I read his website and I was like, I still don't understand it, but I'm gonna learn. Um, fun, interesting thing about Joe, he was nicknamed Mildew in high school. Um, and maybe, you know, he can he can tell us more about where that came from. No, and no. just excited to hear <laughs> what is in store. Thanks so much, Joe. Uh, thanks for that introduction. I have a very serious subject. Um, you know, let's say we only have 10 years left to save the world from climate change by, among other things, cost-effectively drawing down lots of atmospheric CO2. And if we also want to promote environmental justice and a sustainable bioeconomy, I suggest we use our CRBBP process, which I'll tell you more about in a second, and plant lots of biomass sorghum, not trees, even though I love trees and forest. Next, please. I'm a former 33-year economic development professional. I won the Purpose Prize in 2008 for my work uh, trying to connect poor rural communities of color to the green economy. I served for six years on the Federal Biomass Research and Development Technical Advisory Committee, and I invented and patented our CRBBP process, which is held by my tech holding company, Agritech Producers, LLC. I serve on the board of Green Tech, a Sacramento-based uh, nonprofit. Next, please. So we're faced with a number of urban, urgent, national and global challenges. Climate change is one of those. And I just want to emphasize the fact, uh, while we can certainly store carbon in the ground, what's really needed desperately, and our weather conditions and fire uh, emergencies are showing that, is to draw down lots of CO2 from the atmosphere as soon as possible. We also face a series of health challenges and other environmental challenges, uh, which our process can help with. Next, please. So this CRBBP process, I won't say the whole name, it takes too long. Using it, we plant and then we multitask very special bio crops to cost effectively capture CO2, remediate contaminated air, soil and water at the same time, and then provide other health and environmental benefits. We then harvest our crops and convert them into, which includes the captured CO2, into cost advantage circular economy bioproducts. Next, please. So biomass sorghum, which is shown on the right, grows fast, big, and captures 14 tons of CO2 per acre. On the left is standard sorghum, and on the right is biomass sorghum, and you can see the differential in that, and that's why it captures so much CO2 per acre. Next, please. Uh, we had the University of California at Berkeley verify the CO2 capture and turns out that we can actually capture nearly four times as much CO2 as an equal acreage of trees and twice as much as switchgrass, which was the next best bio crop. Next, please. So our process is, is essentially to plant our crops, have them perform a, a variety of environmental services, harvest them, shred the material, and make a number of bioproducts out of that material. Next. So while treating a vacant uh, lot in a community, our biomass sorghum will capture CO2 and screen out airborne particulate matter, which is plaguing many communities, creating uh, uh, health issues that make COVID-19 that much more deadly. We can also do the same as we remediate contaminated brownfield sites or coal ash sites. Next, please. And if we were to grow our crops in vertical bio crop farms, we can more than double our CO2 capture rate. Next, please. And by doing that, we can capture more than 30 tons of CO2 per acre from power plants, other large CO2 emitters, and CO2 collectors all year round. Next, please. California and, and Western states are really suffering from these terrible forest fires. We have a way of mitigating the spread and severity of forest fires using our process. Next. And I'm very familiar with uh, California's salt and sea. We can also mitigate the air, land, and water catastrophe that's underway and only going to get worse in Southern California. Next, please. So we make these bioproducts, including a superior and clean alternative to carbon black filler powder. You may know that this is used to make plastics, composites, and tires are 30% carbon black. 
We can make a superior poultry house bedding and then collect the litter and turn it into a nutrient rich biochar soil amendment, which we've already demonstrated the uh, interest for from the garden care, a home and garden care market. Next, please. 30 seconds. So we've, we've accomplished a number of milestones, uh, including uh, our Maryland operating affiliate was selected by the Exelon Foundation's Climate Change in Investment Initiative. Our Virginia operating affiliate has just entered Dominion Energy's Innovation Center and ATPCA won the Social Impact Prize from the University of California this spring. Next, please. We've got some great funders, collaborators, and R&D partners. Next. We've got competitors, but none of them can do what we do. And Next. Time. Ready for questions. <laughs> Thanks so much, Joe. That was so cool. Um, and would love to invite our investor feedback panel back into the, the Zoom spotlight here um, for questions. Joe, I really appreciated uh, hearing all the different potential uses of Sorghum. That was going to be one of my main questions that you answered in the presentation. Um, one of the things uh, that you were just starting to say is uh, talk a little bit about your competition. And I'm curious to hear what differentiate, differentiate you um, from your competition. Well, most CO2 capture mechanisms, uh, it costs 100 bucks, 200 bucks a ton for them to capture CO2. We're in a range of about 75 just on the CO2 capture. And because we multitask our crops and have them do a variety of things, there are other things that we accomplish across which we can share the cost, including the, the bioproducts that we make to make our process very, very, very cost competitive. Thanks, Joe. This is super, really timely. Uh, I think the carbon credit market has, has gotten a ton of investor attention in the last couple of years here. So uh, there's definitely an angle there. Um, can you just talk a little bit about um, kind of what scale you've operated at to date, whether that's tons processed or whatever is, is the relevant metric. And then also uh, talk a little bit about the business model. It sounds like you have a couple of affiliates, which I'm assuming those are kind of, you've licensed your technology to, but um, just talk a bit about your model. Well, the essence of our business model is to provide environmental services, number one, using our planting, and then secondly, to harvest our crops and, and make a variety of uh, bioproducts as I described. So we have a two-part business model. Uh, we are working on uh, qualifying our process for carbon credits. We've, we've developed uh, relationships with already two utilities. We're working on additional utility partners and, and they are collaborating with us as we help them reduce their carbon footprint. So that's, that's the uh, process that we're involved in at the moment. Thank you, Joe. That was an incredible presentation.